Yo, what's up, y'all? It's Phil James. This is going to be part one in a series to do with geoengineering. In this part one, I'm going to give you the definitions from the big time players in the geoengineering game. Those being Harvard and Oxford. And if you can hear my voice right now, you can hear that it sounds very congested and terrible. Well, in the past couple days, I've showed you some of the absolutely worst chemtrailed skies in and around my area here in central Ohio, and I think, yes, it does have something to do with it. Now, before we get into the videos <clears throat> and all the stuff in favor of the geoengineering and what it is and the definitions of geoengineering by those big-time players, I want to say that in those videos, they tried to make it seem as if they are not doing it yet and that they're not going to start actually geoengineering until this year in 2018 well this video right here is very old and it was put up by a YouTube channel called Mac Entertainment and you're able to see this all the time all you have to do is look up on a clear day and you can watch the sky get slowly bombarded with white lines that is geoengineering. It is one and the same. They actually, in a video, even say that they have never had an experiment where they put something into the stratosphere to test what happens to the stratosphere afterwards. You'll see it later on in this video, but that's the point. You know, they're already doing it, but they try to make it seem as if they are not. So if, if they're not already geoengineering, then what the hell is this jet doing right here? Because if your car or your helicopter or anything else that you was using had exhaust coming out of it like that, you would probably not fly it, drive it, or anything, or ride in it for that matter, because that looks like something is majorly wrong if that is just exhaust. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if that was only exhaust, there is not a chance you would catch me in it. Look at that. That's clearly more than just exhaust. That is clearly not just water vapor. So, hopefully you enjoy the video. Peace. What is geoengineering? To answer that question, I'll use this harvard.edu website under the Keith Group, which comes from Harvard. And I'll also give you a secondary definition. So the Keith Group, geoengineering. Geoengineering refers to a set of emerging technologies that could manipulate the environment and partially offset some of the impacts of climate change. It could not be a replacement for reducing emissions mitigation or coping with a changing climate adaptation, yet it could supplement these efforts. Geoengineering is conventionally split into two broad categories. The first is carbon dioxide removal, or CDR. The other is albedo modification, often called solar radiation management, or solar geoengineering, or SRM. And then I'll throw one more in there, stratospheric aerosol injections. And then the other definition I have here is from Oxford. And it's the Oxford Geoengineering Program. Geoengineering is the deliberate large yeah the, the deliberate large scale manipulation of an environmental process that affects the earth's climate in an attempt to counteract the effects of global warming and like i said that comes from oxford now that we've covered what geoengineering is by definition this will give you some of the answers as to why it is important.
and why it seems to be such a hot topic in the truth community and at large. This also may give you a reason as to why it's happening in the professional way or as in like the government side of things. This video comes from The Economist's YouTube channel, so go ahead and take a, take a look. What if you discovered a way to cool down the planet? Extreme weather events are becoming more common and more ferocious. As the surface temperature of the Earth continues to rise, so too will the ferocity of natural disasters. In 2018, scientists will take bold steps to explore a technology that could reverse the effects of climate change. It's an engineering project that would literally touch every living thing on the planet. They're looking at ways to reflect sunlight back into space and cool down the Earth. Insurers say the number of weather-related disasters has quadrupled since 1970. While world leaders are debating and disputing climate change, and the ways in which humans alter their behavior on Earth, some scientists discuss changes to the Earth itself. In 2018, they'll take to the stratosphere to learn what it might take, or cost, to cool the planet directly. Geoengineering is the pioneering science that could well be on everyone's lips in 2018. The idea of geoengineering is the idea that humans purposefully influence the climate of the planet. Solar geoengineering specifically is the idea of introducing a substance into the stratosphere that will cool down the planet by reflecting back sunlight. The same idea as wearing a white shirt in summer. The white shirt reflects sunlight back. You don't feel as hot as if you wear a black shirt. This is humans deliberately trying to have an effect on the climate, a fundamentally different undertaking from merely messing up the climate, which we've been doing for centuries. The team from Harvard University is the first in the world to test the effects solar geoengineering might have in the stratosphere. Our experiment will be a small balloon payload that weighs a few hundred kilograms. It'll fly about 20 kilometers up in the stratosphere. That's about twice as high as a commercial jet. It will release a small amount, less than a kilogram of material, and then it'll fly back and forth and measure the way those interact with the background chemistry of the stratosphere. What makes this experiment unique is that there has never been a purposeful introduction of materials in the stratosphere to... to study the impact this has. The experiments in 2018 won't impact the climate, but if one day implemented, this controversial intervention could help curb extreme weather events. Geoengineering offers options for reducing the harm that real people are going to suffer in their tens of millions and hundreds of millions. If we turn down the sun a little bit, that brings the Earth's energy more into balance. And that could reduce some of the risks like extreme storms or extreme temperatures. Solar geoengineering has the potential to save lives, but it also poses unknown risks. You're introducing something into the environment that wasn't there naturally. There will be side effects. The question is, can we understand how big or small they are? If humanity ever decides to do it,
uncertainty about how well it works and what the risks are. And there are fears that merely researching geoengineering might be detrimental to the long-term fight against climate change. There are a number of highly respected scientists who say that experiments on solar geoengineering should not be done. Their concern is that you will make people think there is an option available, that is a solution to climate change. Best, solar geoengineering is a supplement to cutting emissions, not a substitute for cutting emissions. Some environmentalists say that the drive to reduce carbon dioxide emissions could be lost if there seemed to be a quick fix. And deciding who controls a technology that affects everyone on the planet won't be easy. You are going to have disagreements about where to do this, about how quickly to do this. And those sorts of disagreements might lead to international tensions. Ultimately, solar geoengineering could prove a risk not worth taking. But ignoring it now could be even more dangerous. I believe that choosing ignorance over knowledge is never the right choice. Our generation aren't the deciders. It's our kids or their kids who will make the real decisions about implementation. My fundamental view is we owe it to our kids to give them more information. If we do no research, we give them a gift of ignorance. All right, so what have we learned so far in this video series? Well, we've learned that they're still denying that they're even doing any geoengineering. We've also learned that they want to manipulate the climate of Earth to counteract climate change. Now, wait. What the hell what the hell did I just say? Oh no, I said it accurately. That's exactly what they're doing. So, to stop global warming and climate change, we are going to, you know, change the climate. It's it's hard to say because it's that astounding. Like, it doesn't even make sense. It's getting too hot out here, and the climate intensity and the changing climate is just too much. So we, ourselves, are going to change the climate. No sense whatsoever. None. But like I, you know, like we've seen in the past couple video segments, they want to act as if they haven't even started it yet. Well, here are some United States patents and trademark trademarks, okay, throughout history that all deal with what? Geoengineering type patents. So, as you can tell, April twenty seventh, nineteen twenty, process and apparatus for the for the production of intense artificial clouds, fogs, or mists, aerial delivery devices, systems, and methods. These are back in 1920, okay? So they've been dabbling with the stratospheric aerosol injection type stuff and the solar radiation management type technology and the carbon dioxide removal type technology for quite some time been around so that brings me to the next category in this series so the next thing we will cover in the next segment of this video series we will cover the 
two broad branches of geoengineering, maybe some chemicals that are involved, and we'll also cover the third that I like to throw in. So the first one, as you remember in the definitions, carbon dioxide removal, or CDR. The second, albedo modification, or solar radiation management, or solar geoengineering, and that's the one, you know, they they relate it to wearing a white shirt in summer because it reflects the sunlight away and you don't feel as hot that one or spraying a layer in the stratosphere to reflect sunlight back out into space so and then the third that I throw in there is stratospheric aerosol injections now I keep that one in there as a side like a little partial branch of solar geoengineering because it uses the same delivery systems you know but the stratospheric aerosol injections, if they have any sort of sinister plan, it would go in that one because it deals with all aerosols that are injected into the stratosphere. So that could be numerous on this list. That could be just like in the 50s when they spray radioactive agents over California just to see the outcome. You know, that could be that. It might not have anything to do at all with weather modification, but it's still in the stratospheric aerosol injection category because they're spraying it in the stratosphere. They let it shower down on civilians, and there's more of a sinister plot behind that. Now, like I said, this is just a list of patents and trademarks throughout history that deal with all of these geoengineering type processes and cloud seedings and whatnot. So I will leave a link to this in the description below for you to check out in your own time. But this was part one of a numerous part series and I'm hoping to get detailed and maybe change a few people's minds about how they feel about geoengineering and if it's real or not. So hope everybody enjoyed hope everybody opens their minds and I hope everybody opens their eyes and points them to the skies because that's where you'll see it taking place. Alright y'all. Phil James and I'm out. Peace.